How do you pronounce his partner's name? Christina. Just Christina, yeah. It's spelled in a very cool way. Yeah, yeah. Um, can I tell them the baby's name? Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah. Hawk, a little boy. So Michael's in that magic bubble. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was a couple days ago, Tuesday or Monday. Monday. So he asked if I would sub for him. And I gladly said yes. I think this is the first time I've ever been asked to sub because a friend had a baby. So <laughs> I feel really, it's such an amazing uh, kind of rite of passage. For those of you who have had children, you know it's, it's really magic. These first few months are like one of my most favorite times because the world kind of stands still and you're in this beautiful um, magic place of falling in love with this incredible little being that just came into your life like a miracle. So uh, can, I can just only imagine how Michael's feeling and Christina as well, recovering. And I'm sure she's grateful that Michael is home because <laughs> things are not easy when you're recovering from, from childbirth. So come on in, there's one special spot right in front, and we can also line up more pillows along the back or along the side. Yeah. So my name is Chandra Easton. I told Katie that I would introduce myself to make it easier on you. It's always kind of an embarrassing thing, actually, for me. So I'd rather just uh, tell you briefly that um, Michael and I met uh, probably five or six years ago when we were both teaching at a center in San Francisco called Against the Stream that now is called San Francisco Dharma Collectives. And we met, they would have dinners for the teachers and we hit it off and we, I learned more about him through our mutual friend Eve Ekman and that's of course where I met you Katie. And um, Against the Stream sadly folded but then the phoenix rose from the ashes with San Francisco Dharma Collective which is really an interesting place that uh, doesn't really have a guiding teacher, you know, and it's sort of uh, more of a horizontal power structure there with the board, and I really appreciate that space. But, you know, Michael found this place, and he's uh, lured me into it. So I will start teaching my own class September 20th. It'll be Tuesday nights from 7 to 8.30. It starts September 20th, and that's all on the website. So I, uh, my background's more Tibetan Buddhist, but I've studied all the, the various tradition, not all, but the three yanas, you know, the early, middle, and later phases of Buddhism. I have a deep appreciation for all of them. And Michael and I have a, 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 a very um, similar love story with chanting and music. So to celebrate Michael, I thought I would bring this harmonium I haven't really chanted and sung with the group in so long and I felt I had to take advantage of it. And the harmonium's like, take me, take me. <laughs> and so here we are. I figured at the end of class we'll do a chant that I've written here to uh, Tara and her form of blessing, long life, longevity, good health. And she actually also is very um, associated with protecting children. So I thought it would be fun to do this Tara later and dedicate it to Michael and Christina and little angel Hawk. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess, you know, is that enough? Should I tell them what's up? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that <was a> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's enough. Let's just do, let's experience the space together. And how many are here for the very first time at the Alembic? Oh, great. Hi, welcome. Uh, Michael, I love his class. Kevin and I came about a month ago, I think, and sat with Michael, and I appreciated how he led the group. And I told him, you know, I'm not that different than you. I like to do a little bit of movement first to get the body ready to sit, and then we're going to sit for an hour. So he does that. And what he tells people, and I've never heard this before, but I think it's really cool, is that if you, for some reason, you have a physical situation, or you just are, are new to meditation, and you're a little daunted, you don't think you'll be able to hold the posture for an hour with relative stillness, you know, then there is a side room over here that you could listen or watch the stream. Yeah, there's a live oh, stream. Yeah. yeah. And then you could wiggle. So the wigglers can go <laughs> in the wiggle room. <laughs> 
or not the wiggling, but you know, the freedom room, I guess, to move if you have to. And I don't belittle that at all. I have had phases in my life where the body couldn't sit still, and that's A okay. You yeah, can still meditate, you can lie down and do a supine position like Shavasana and yoga. So that's a total vi totally viable way to meditate. So the first ingredient of meditation is to feel relaxed, right? So if you're, if you're really experiencing a lot of pain, like nerve pain, then I would say, you know, allow yourself to, to accommodate your body. Anything else I should say about that? Okay, okay. So, I'm actually going to have you stand up, okay? And this is about a 10-minute movement thing. I taught yoga for 20 years. I don't teach it so much anymore, but you know, I can always pull it out of my back pocket and, <laughs> and teach a little bit of movement because it's so important to feel good for meditation. So what we're going to do first, really the main thing we're doing is a set of movements called the Dasha Chalanam. Dasha, chalanam. Dasha means ten. Chalanam means churnings. So we're churning our joints. My joke is we're, we're rolling a joint. <laughs> we're rolling joints. <laughs> we're going to roll our joints and in a healthy way not have a hangover afterwards. So creating mobility in the joints is really good for circulation, for your mind, when the body's comfy, when the prana's moving um, fluidly. The mind feels good, the emotions feel good too. So what we do is we start with the base, meaning the feet. You can be on or off your cushion if you want. You don't have to stand on it. Like Eli and Katie, you can stand in front, that's fine. Also kind of make sure when you reach your arms out that you're not gonna strike your neighbor. Spread out if you need to. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's okay, we're not doing big movement, but we'll do the helicopter arms, right? So. So first we do the base, and then we come up to the head, the neck, shoulders, wrists, spine, hips, and knees, okay? So standing with the feet hip width distance apart. Let's take a moment here to just bring the right hand to the navel, left hand on top for a brief centering a standing meditation called stamba, the stake, the staff. Allow the eyes to rest at a comfortable angle towards the floor. Bring the tip of your tongue to rest against the upper palate. Relax the lower jaw away from the upper jaw. Breathing through the nose or mouth, spine. Feel the shoulders release down away from the ears and the chest becomes buoyant. All of these principles are the same for seated meditation. Shoulders relaxed, reach up through the crown of the head and bring the chin slightly towards the center of the throat, lengthening the back of the neck and the space between the skull and the, or the occiput and the top vertebrae of the neck. That's right. Now breathe into the belly, feel the belly rise and fall beneath the hands. It's as if you're pouring water into a pitcher. The breath pours into the body, the torso, filling from the base to the middle to the top. And then the out breath is like pouring that water out of the pitcher from the top to the middle to the base. Feel the tailbone reaching down to the floor, lengthening the space, but not over tucking the tailbone, just lengthening the space at the low back, the lumbar spine, and the sacrum. And then feel the leg bones rooting into the feet bones. And feel the bones of the feet spread against the floor. And feel a whole global perspective suffusing your body. It's like your awareness 
suffuses the entire body from the soles of the feet to the crown of the head. Good, and then now release the hands. We'll start with the right foot. I'll show you the side version. So take your right foot a little behind to the side like this. Weight on top of the toes. And then you're going to circle, spiraling the ankle. And that turns the knee and the hip. You actually feel the spiral, if you can, travel all the way up through the spine and out the crown of the head. So normally we do about eight in each direction. But because we're learning, we don't have to fixate on the numbers so much. We'll do a few more mainly because I always lose count when I'm teaching it. <laughs> and then let's reverse. One, two. Feel it spiraling through the body. Really stake that standing leg into the floor. And seven, eight. Place the foot nice and firm on the floor. And the left toes behind a bit. And then circle out. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, reverse. One, two, feel the navel draw back towards the spine and that helps you lift and balance. Seven, eight, mm -hmm. good. So now feet equal length beneath the hips. We're gonna come up to the neck. So release the chin down and to the right, circling the nose as you turn the head. Imagine that you're drawing a circle on an imaginary mirror in front of you. So you don't drop the head far back behind you. It's more of a lateral movement. You can do small circles or bigger circles, whatever feels good for your body. Breathing into the belly, breathing into the feet. Root the feet as you turn the head a couple more times. Relax the shoulders. Mm -hmm, good. One more. Coming down to the chest and then reverse to the left. One. Two. Relax the jaw. The muscles of the face. Three. Breathing naturally. Feel rooted in the feet. Four. back around to the chest and then inhale, lift the face, looking neutral, get your balance, you might feel a little dizzy. And if you get dizzy with those, you can also do lateral stretches, like that. Yeah. Okay, now we move to the shoulders, forward, up, down, and back, one, two, three, four, five, good, six, seven, eight, Reverse, one, two. It's like your fingers are drawing little circles on the side of your thighs. Five, that's nice. Six, seven, and eight. Now we do the wrists. Interlace the fingers in front of the face and start to roll the wrists. The forearms glide by each other. Kind of do a double time here. Relax the shoulders. In Qigong, this is sometimes called two cobras mating. Yeah, good. And reverse. One, two. Yeah, it's hard if you if you think it, if you overthink it. <laughs> this is where people's tongues come out and they're like... <laughs> Seven and eight. Now we do helicopter arms. Two, your right. I'll try to mirror you. One, two, three, four. Keep going. We'll just do this for a while. The front hand taps the lung point in Chinese medicine, a, a little bit of a love tap or pressure there helps to stimulate the lung function. So with the 
heel of your palm. You tap the juncture of the shoulder and the chest. And then the back hand taps the kidney point, which is just at the lower ribs where the kidney and adrenals are. Let the head go. The spine, this is for the whole spine here. If you've got a sensitive low back, you can make smaller movements. Take some deep breaths. You'll feel real floppy here. Yeah. Let the head move. Don't hold the face forward. Let it move with the spine. That's it. A few more. Good. And left taps. Last time. And to your left. Coming down, and then spiral the hips to the right. The legs stay straight. It's not like belly dancing, right? It's like the knees stay straight, and you imagine that you're drawing a circle in like the sand with your tailbone. As you make small or large circles, whatever feels good for you, let the arms kind of dangle, your chest is soft, your kind of your face is relaxed, you're kind of drunk here. If you're like, <laughs> just let it all go. All that holding and thinking, talking, just so feel it melting. And then let's reverse. One, two, good, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Coming to center. Now step <coughs> the feet together, <coughs> frog, and bend the knees from the backs of the knees forward. You can put your hands on top of the knees like this, just on the thighs above the knees, or I like to do like this with the fingers turned in. Really feel yourself bend from the back of the knees forward. Yeah, good. And then the face is going to look down towards the floor so the neck is long. Okay, one, circle, two, three. Now we'll take it in the shoulders, relax the shoulders. Four, six, seven, and eight. Reverse one. Really be in the legs. They're going to get warm here. This is good. Feet should be parallel. Feet, feet, feet are parallel and they're together. Yeah. Good. Seven, eight, and standing. Okay, feet hip width distance apart for the last move. This is like. It's called sarpa, which means snake. So you bend the knees, the butt comes out, and then you shift the hips forward, and you do it like a very low-key wave. You, know, you can do it kind of small, or you can make a big wave, whatever feels good, but feel that rippling motion from the feet to the legs, all the way up through the spine. Until about 16, keep going. You can close your eyes, you don't Think too much about it. Don't worry about what you look like. It's more important to feel that wave. Releasing any tightness through the spine and the hips. Good. And let's see, this is the last one. With your last time straightening the legs, inhale the arms up overhead. And then exhale, press the energy down through the legs into the feet. And do two more like this. Inhale. You can release the head back if it feels good or not. Then chin down to the chest. Exhale. Really press the energy down, rooting into the feet into the earth. Again, inhale. And then exhale. Good. So that concludes the Dasha Chalanam. There's a couple more moves, but we'll, what I want to do now is just let you kind of bend your knees and then roll forward. Tonight we'll just do this. And just let yourself get weightless for a bit through the spine. Let the head grow heavy. You can nod the head, yes. And then shake it now if you like, but be real gentle. Just keep the breath in the belly. You can straighten the knees if you're more experienced and can do it. 
breathe. Let's do three more breaths here. Just doing whatever you feel you need. Just free flow, you know. Whatever you need. Okay, so then from here we just bend the knees and sit down for meditation. Okay, so that concludes the Dasha Chalana on the Ten Churnings. <coughs> Take a moment to get comfortable. So finding your own unique seat that you can hold with ease, relative ease and stillness for the duration of the meditation. It's nice to take the seat and then give yourself a little bit of time to settle in and make sure it's the one for you right now. Whether you're in a chair or on the cushion, make sure the spine is nice and straight, even if you're lying down. Straight but supple, not rigid. Feel the sits bones rooting into the seat. chair, feel the feet nice and rooted, square on the floor. If you're on the floor, comfortable cross-legged or zazen seat. Shoulders relaxed, the arms relaxed, the palms can be facing, facing down on your thighs. Or in the mudra of meditative equipoise with the right hand resting atop the left and the two thumbs gently touching. And resting with the eyes closed to begin. Or slightly open if that's more comfortable for you. The chin is drawn in towards the center of the throat, just like our standing meditation. The back of the neck lengthens. Shoulders release down away from the ears and the chest is buoyant. And feel the breath descending, filling the belly from the base to the top. Let's take a few deep, luxurious breaths here, releasing any tension with the out breath. Luxurious breaths here. Feel tension melting down into the earth beneath you. And then release any control of the breath. And feel and find your natural rhythm. It's a natural in and out flow. If it's long, let it be long. If it's short, let it be short.
and feel that your body is settling and resting, aligned with gravity like a mountain. Settling in stillness. Feel a breath natural and at ease, like a cool breeze blowing through the trees, unforced. And natural like a sleeping baby. Feel the mind vast like space, like the sky, clear blue, open, expansive. And from time to time, of course, thoughts will bubble up like clouds forming and then abiding and then dissolving within that space of the mind. Nothing to do, nothing to fix. Just observe and release any grasping, any judgment or fixation, thoughts, sensations, fantasies, ruminations. They're just like clouds arising, abiding, and then dissolving back into the space from which they arose.
You may notice the mind's tendency to control or resist. Almost like an addiction to your own thoughts. See if you can release that fixation or resistance as soon as a thought or a story arises. Just notice it. Let it play itself out within that vast space of your mind. There's room for it. But you don't have to be fused with it. You don't have to take it for a ride and believe it and follow. Just stay in your center, in your axis. In fact, it's the mind's natural nature to think. So thinking's not a problem. It just bubbles up like a hot spring bubbling up from beneath the surface of the earth. It just bubbles up the unending bubbling of thoughts aren't a problem. See if you can widen the space within which those thoughts arise and pass. And just rest, you can observe. Release the fixation, the stickiness, the zinpa. Tibetan means clinging or grasping. That's what you release. And then open back up into that experience of spaciousness. Get rooted in your body like a mountain. In fact, space pervades your body. We're 99.99% space. Pervaded by space. Mind and body. Unified in that space. distracted and lost in thought and come back to the belly, feel the breath in the belly, feel your body. Rooted like a mountain at ease within itself, that the mind is vast like the sky.
invite you to slightly open your eyes and gaze at a comfortable angle towards the floor if they're not open already. <clears throat> Soften the gaze as if you could see 360 degrees around you. It's like a lantern, soft glow of consciousness surrounding you, the visual field, not staring at any one thing in particular. Just a comfortable downward cast gaze. And relax the muscles behind and around the eyes. Relax the face. Now we're shifting slightly to observe the domain of the mind, like the sky, like space. That's still there. With the eyes open, there's a feeling of, in a sense, being able to stabilize the experience of resting in awareness, and also observing the contents of the mind so that the mind becomes the object of meditation. You're not gazing pointedly, it's a soft glow. Feel free to blink if you need to from time to time. The eyes will get used to resting open over time. And settle the mind in its natural state, free of grasping, free of distraction. Continue with this experience of spacious awareness. Thoughts, feelings, memories arise and pass. And just observe if there's fatigue. Just let there be fatigue without judgment. There's space, there's room for that. There's excitation, distraction. No judgment, just let there be space for that. And just rest from the vantage point of awareness. Rather than fused the vantage point of thought. It's like sitting back and watching the show and enjoying the vast, spacious, relaxed, yet clear and limpid natural state of mind, dawn within you, luminosity, settle up, and clarity. This is awareness. Rest in it.
And now shifting from settling the mind in its natural state, building upon that into awareness of awareness, or another way of feeling that is mix awareness with space, even more consciously now. And from time to time, you may even ask, who is meditating? Look. Release. And rest in that spacious awareness that abides, pervades everything. Your thoughts, your sensations, your past, your present, your future, the space of awareness is always here with you, and yet you don't even notice because it's like the air you breathe. It's actually quite simple, uncomplicated. Just rest in awareness. With relaxation, stability, and clarity. From time to time, when you ask, who is meditating? Turn to look at the mind. Can you find it? Can you find you? Perhaps you may notice there's a quality of being, of presence, of cognizance. That is your own rigpa, your pristine awareness. And then rest in that experience. The labels, the body, the clothes, the stories, all of that is a part of you, but that's not the depth of who you really are behind all of that. Rest in that awareness that holds, that pervades, that suffuses everything, all your perception. Just rest, mixing awareness with space.
the wish you can imagine of a dedication, any positive energy of cultivated so-called merit, offering it up, dedicating it to all beings. And the feeling is like a small drop of, of your merit that you're offering, and you release it into the vast ocean, and positive energy becomes limitless, like a drop of water entering the ocean. Thank you. Ringing this bell reminded me of uh, Thich Nhat Han. I had the chance to sit with him a few times, mostly at family retreats he would do. This, with our first child, we, um, my ex and I would take our kid to this family retreat with Thich Nhat Han. They called him Taiyi, affectionately. Has anyone studied with him in the room? Did anybody? Get to do any retreats with Thich Nhat Hanh, the Zen master from Vietnam. He was pretty phenomenal, but he would ring this bell, the same bell, and it's so beautiful. And he would sing to it. He would give teachings on the bell. And so I just, I just passed away. Great human being, Bodhisattva. So I was enjoying the memories coming back. Has anyone read his books, some of his books? Yeah, you're aware of who he is, yeah. If you haven't, I highly recommend it. And I'm sure you can see many wonderful talks on YouTube that he's given teachings. So, um, I know this is when Michael opens it up for comments or questions. Maybe we could spend a few minutes doing that, if you wish, and then we'll end the class with some chanting. We have about 15 minutes, so observations, questions, it might have been, you know, I'm sure it was different than what you usually do with Michael for those of you who are regulars. Um, we did a Dzogchen, Great Perfection style of shamatha, calm abiding, called Settling the Mind in its Natural State. And then we shifted into awareness of awareness, or mixing awareness with space. In a sense, it's like shamatha without an object. And uh, it can take you right to Rigpa, awareness. And in the teachings, they make a big deal out of it, but it's actually not a big deal, <laughs> you know? It's like I said, the air you breathe, it's always here with you. You don't have to become a, a hero or superwoman, Wonder Woman to earn it. It's already here right now. Can you feel it? Yeah. They say that awareness is like the sky, but it's not exactly like the sky because it has a quality of knowing presence, right? Did you feel that? Of course. You're feeling it right now. You know me. I'm talking. You're aware of your body and space. So, Consciousness, but we're talking about Rigpa, like awareness with a capital A. Rigpa is a Tibetan word, or Vidya in Sanskrit. It has that knowing quality, the presence, a cognizance, right? But it's also suffused with luminosity, with clarity, like a light shining. It illuminates whatever you point it towards. So if you can just rest in that. Not just a meditation, but also now, now, yeah, now. That's, that's the sign of a master when you can thread those moments. Mastery. I need the better word, master. But you know what I mean. Okay.
questions, rebuttals, comments, observations? How is it meditating with your eyes open? Is it weird? Is it hard? Is it cool? Yeah. Well, I'm not used to meditating with my eyes open. Yeah. But with the breath, I've been trying to remind myself, like, oh, like, this is the first breath. This is the first breath. And so with sight, it's a little bit harder to be like, oh, this is the first time I've seen this. Like, mm -hmm. this is also like reappearing or like arising. Um, and so it helped with like the blinking, being like, oh, like that's the first time seeing this, this is the first time seeing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. That's wonderful. It's like a freshness. You're bringing a fresh. Mm -hmm experienced every moment, whether it's a breath, or a visual stimuli, or a thought, or the eyes opening. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah, let, let it be a light touch, you know, it doesn't have to be always there, but it feels like a good step, and then you can release that, and just be, yeah, that's nice. I tend to meditate with my eyes open because I tend to get drowsy otherwise. Yeah. Um, and uh, it just keeps me you know, sharper and grounded. What I notice is I start to cycle through my senses. Like, I'll, I'm like, oh, I'm really paying too much attention to my vision. So uh -huh. I'm going to my hearing. And, oh, now I'm paying attention to my hearing. I should go to what I'm feeling my body. And then back to vision. So sometimes I just feel like I'm getting caught up. So I feel like Yeah, yeah. The, those are steps. That is the four foundations of mindfulness. You've probably learned that. Right? Uh, body and the breath is usually the practice for mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of sensation. Like, well, that's the body, but also it's really mindfulness of feelings. There's psychological feelings and there's physiological feelings. So that's the second foundation of mindfulness, feelings. And then uh, emotions, no, thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. That's the third, so you're aware of thoughts bubbling up. Um, and then the fourth is phenomena, which is everything that comes in through the senses. And so in a way, it sounds like you're kind of cycling around in that that's progressive experience, more or less, maybe more through the five senses. But maybe, the, maybe, don't, maybe you can crack the bubble or pop the bubble of this thought of when the eyes are open, it's just the visual sense, you know. Because really what the eyes can do is they can help you, first of all, dissolve the illusion that you only exist inside. You know, I mean, when you were all in my mind, <laughs> we were all in your mind, we are. Everything is filtered through perception. So the, the vision, the, the eyes open kind of helps you kind of crack through the, the illusion of just being in the body, so that's helpful. So that meditation is not like a vision meditation. It's just a tool opening the eyes, and it actually helps you learn to blend the meditative state with the post-meditative state, right? Because for the most of the day, your eyes are open, you're doing things. You're interacting, you're filtering, but likewise through the ears, the other sense, the nose, smells, the tongue, taste, tactile sensations, skin. So if you want in the beginning, let that be, you can cycle through those to even everything out, but then let it go and focus on space. Focus on that spacious quality. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? <laughs> Good. Yeah, Emily. I missed it because I wasn't in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. But did you write this on the board? I did. And can you explain um, what it is? Yeah, I didn't. You didn't miss that. Oh. <laughs> but it's a good time to do that because time is marching on. And we have Donna talk. Okay, so let's shift. Okay, before we do, 
I'll take your question. I want to... Well, it's more of an offering. Oh, yes, I'm a offer. musician, and I play the percussion. And if you don't feel good, just yell at me and I'll go grab my guy up. Yeah. I mean, if, you, you know, if you're confident and you're playing enough to offer it up right now, then right. go get it. That's great. What do you play? Uh, djembe. But awesome. It's, uh, awesome. Yeah, great. Awesome. Okay. That's so cool. <laughs> I love it. You have your bass? <laughs> so we'll be doing this in my Tuesday classes, music. So. And everybody's welcome. Okay, so this Tara, this is one of the mantras to the female Buddha of compassion named Tara. T-A-R-A. -A. How many people know green Tara, white Tara, red Tara, blue Tara, golden Tara? So green Tara is really one of the most popular manifestations of the divine feminine in, in a Buddha form. But there are also other ones, and I'm writing a book right now on the 21 Taras. So there's this classic text from medieval India from the 11th century that praises the goddess Tara in Tantra Buddhism in 21 different ways. So I'm writing a book on it, I'm kind of adapting it and telling stories of real life women who embody the qualities of each Tara. And I'm editing it right now, it should be out next fall. <laughs> So we're also making melodies to the mantras to each tada. And my, my wonderful musician friends and I have written all of those melodies. We just have to record them. This is the 21st tada mantra. She's white, but she's not white. <laughs> she's actually crystal, crystal clear. And my Tonka friend, Tibetan artist, told me that we use white because we don't have any other way of showing clear crystal. So she's a crystal. Tara, devoted to long life, longevity, and protecting children, ultimately liberating, liberating us from samsara, suffering. So Om is the universal sound of consciousness of the universe. Tare is the vocative form of her name Tara, meaning, oh Tara, like you're calling to her. Tutare means come near Tara. Tut means near, close. And then Tare, that's her name again. Then Ture means swiftly, or I like to say hurry. <laughs> you know, hurry, come. Come here, please. I need you. Then Marichie, it means rays of light. So she's also known as the, the Tara ray, rays of light goddess. Marichie, Marichie. Can you say that? Marichie. Then, Che, I have no idea what that means, I still can't find it, but I'm getting there. Brum is the seed syllable, the Bija mantra for long life deities. It's found in other long life deity <coughs> mantras. Brum, can you say Brum? Brum. Okay, good. Nija means a few different things, let's just suffice it to say it means born from a lotus. So she's born from a lotus. This rays of light, Tara. Svaha means basically like homage. Hail, O Tara. So Om, Tara, please come swiftly near me, O Tara. Ray, goddess rays of light. Brum, long life, Bijam, the syllable. You're born of a lotus. I hail to you. Something like that. Okay. So repeat after me. Om Tare. Tutare, Ture, Marichie, Che, Brum, Nija, Sva. Sorry, it's really clunky, but yeah, sounds good. Now it's not Tare, it's Tare. Make it a dental ta that's crisp. Ta, and then the R rolls. Ra, ra, tare. Tare. Good. Tare. Om Tare Tu Tare Ture Mari Che Che Brum Nija Svaha. So, I'll just start, and the drummer, when he comes in, he can join. Hold on. Make sure. 
Om tare tu tare tu re mari che che brum nija sa May Hawk have a long, wonderful life. And I welcome Michael's new baby into this space. And I'm so happy for them. It's words can't even describe the experience of bringing a life into this world. So congratulations, Michael, and the community around you. It's beautiful to share this. Thank you for singing with me. And initiating my first kind of real experience being here with community. That's really great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you. That was fun. Thank you. Let's do that some more. I would love to. Yeah, we're just getting warmed up. Yeah. We only had four minutes, so <laughs> it was good. You're all you all made the band. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Thank you, Chandra. Thank you. Welcome to Thanks. teaching here. Um, and so, yeah, Chandra will be here every Tuesday starting September 20th at 7 p.m. Um, so come back for that. You can register for that now uh, on our website and on our Eventbrite. So check that out, register in advance, uh, and every Tuesday will be uh, slightly different, but you've, yes. got, you've got the vibe. Um, so hope to see you on September 20th and on Tuesdays after that. Um, also coming up, if you don't know uh, about the movement stuff we're doing here, so tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. we have Qigong with Melissa Forrester. She's incredible. Uh, she's a very good teacher, it's a very powerful practice. So that's tomorrow morning at 10. It was at 8.30 and people were showing up at 9, like, disheveled because it was so early. So we moved it to 10 and attendance, like, tripled. So, uh, nice. yeah, so 10 a.m. tomorrow, like, the nice, easy time, 10 a.m. Do you want a mic? Um, no, I, I don't like the, I don't like the mic. You know, it distracts me. Um, I, all, my, all my attention gets, like, collapsed into the, into the mic. Yeah. Uh, Saturday mornings from 9.30 to 10.45. Um, we have, it's called Soulful Flow, and no one knows what that is. It's a yoga class taught by a yoga instructor who is also trained in Alexander Technique. Mm. Um, so it's an hour and 15 minutes of yoga with like an infor informed by Alexander Technique. Um, Rosa Lewis, who was just here teaching with us, said it was the best yoga class she's ever been to. Mm. So if you haven't checked that out, highly recommend it. That's Saturday mornings, 9.30 to 10.45. Um, and then the other thing that's coming up that you should know about if you're not going to the desert next week, how many of you are still are going to be in town? Okay, cool. Okay, so on Wednesday night, we've got Don Slepian here. He is going to play his entire album, Sea of Bliss. I had the unique pleasure of meeting Don uh, yes, yesterday? Yesterday. Is that yesterday? Yeah. He's amazing. He was involved in the early days of DARPA. Um, he calls what he does computer music. He's like that kind of guy. Um, and he's going he's gonna to sit here, and there's going to be his piano here. And then we're going to have someone with a projector live mixing video from four different video sources going along with the music. We're going to like lie on the floor and just like be entertained by this. Um, and then there's going to be like a 10-minute break, and then there's a Q&A with Don, so we can just like pelt questions at him about... I repeat, computer music. Um, so that's next Wednesday, and it's by donation. It's a $10 donation. Like, if you're doing anything that isn't in the desert next Wednesday night other than that, like, I don't know what you're doing. It's going to be awesome. Um, so that's on Wednesday night. And um, finally, second to penultimately finally, uh, we named this place Alembic um, after the alchemical vessel. So an Alembic is a sacred container where mind and matter meet and transform. And that's our aspiration for this space. So everything we do here has the quality of being a place where mind and matter are meeting and intersecting. Everything we do in the meditation realm here in particular is done by donation so that everyone who um, wants access to these practices can have that. Um, so please donate if you haven't already. We're also a nonprofit. Your donation is tax deductible. 
Um, another way you can contribute to the community is by volunteering your time. So we have some people in the room who, um, like Sam here, uh, did all the research for the cushions and also for the signs. So like the signs are amazing. You're sitting on cushions because of time that Sam put in. Thank you, Sam. Um, if you've been seeing for the past week, like the really amazing schedule graphics that we've been posting, Emily made all of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Emily is rocking it. Uh, and there's a bunch of other people here who could, there's, um, I don't know if um, the artist who did this is here. I don't know if he wants to be like, wants attention or not. So if he wants that, yes. he can raise his hand. It's okay, amazing. Gabe, who made this amazing art is here. You can say hi to Gabe afterwards. Also, if you haven't looked at it up close, come up on the stage after and look at it. It's amazing. Um, Steven and I are working on a neuroscience project together. So there's like tons of ways to get involved in the community. And the easiest way is to stay after this for tea in the lobby. Yeah, so there's right. tea in the lobby, have some tea, chat, uh, with your friends. The martial arts class is also letting out at the same time. Don't let them convince you to join it though. There's like a steady stream of people like defecting from this class over there. So try to like win some of them back. Um, and sign up for the mailing list. Uh, that's the best way to kind of stay in touch with what's going on. Um, and the next newsletter will be going out sometime last week in August, first week in September. And um, you won't know what's going on if you're not on the mailing list. You can sign up uh, on the iPad in the lobby. Okay, I'll see you out there. Thank you, Chandra. Yeah, thank you. This was lovely. Was great. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Put your questions away. See you in the lobby. Yeah.